Hey everybody, Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. And today, I'm gonna operate on an orange. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Why would I wanna do that? <laughs> Let me tell you. When we do our medical training, we have to learn how to suture on humans. And we need to do that without actually suturing on humans, because you gotta learn how to hold your instruments, you gotta learn. Let's see if I can get this. How much pressure to apply and all those kinds of things. I guess through experience we found there are a number of things that we can use as close facsimiles or close representatives of human skin and the texture of human bodies. A few of those things that we use are oranges, pig's feet, don't have any of those here today, but if you like this video be sure to let me know in the comment section and I'll be sure to show you that. Yeah. <laughs> We like oranges in particular because the amount of pressure that you have to put on skin to either cut it with a scalpel or to pass a needle through the, the flesh is roughly equivalent to what it's like for um, you to do that to human tissue. So you can go through a lot of oranges when they're practicing and not worry that you're doing something that's very expensive, doing something that is dangerous or harmful to somebody, doing something that's gonna be uh, bloody or, or create a lot of mess other than a little bit of spilt orange juice. Yeah, I got it. So I have here an assortment of instruments that I might typically use if I were doing a small procedure. Not all of them I'm gonna use today, but I'll show you what those things are. The first thing, if we're going to operate on something, we're going to have a knife or a scalpel. This is called an 11 blade. Well, that refers to the shape of the blade. At least in orthopedics, we use 15 blades, which is a very small rounded tip blade. We use number 10 blades, which are rounded but very large. Those are our primary skin scalpels. And then we use 11 blades when we want to make very small holes, such as if we are doing uh, procedures like arthroscopy. So then we also have what we call snaps. These are hemostats and these are very fine hemostats. They uh, come to a small point there. You can use them to grasp and hold things. Sometimes we'll use them to grasp sutures. This is called a needle driver. It kind of looks like a snap, but you can see the end is straight and it's not curved. But this is used to hold sutures. Usually we will hold it with thumb in one hole, our middle finger in the other hole, and we use our index finger on the shaft to help control it. But there are a number of different ways. You can hold it with one in the fourth, and you can not put anything in that other one, and you can just use your thumb on the edge of it. Uh, so there's a number of different ways to hold that. We have scissors here. These are a curved pair of scissors, and these are relatively fine scissors. These are called Metzenbaum scissors. Very slim dissection scissors, which have a curved point. Then we have our forceps. There are a number of different kinds of forceps. These are relatively fine forceps. They're not micro forceps. People use when they're operating on vasculature or a nerve tissue. So these are called adsins. They're serrated in there. So you can have teeth and you can have fine forceps without teeth. That helps us to grasp fine, delicate tissue and grasp the needle. And then we have the suture. We have many different sizes. So this is called a 3-0 suture. And this is a relatively common skin suture that we use for closure. It's what we call a monofilament suture, which means that it is one single filament, one single strand, as opposed to a polyfilament um, suture, which is many strands woven together like a rope. This is called proline, which is basically a type of plastic. So this is a non-absorbable suture. So when we put this suture in, this is the type of suture you need to have cut out. As opposed to something like uh, cat gut, which is actually a material that we use for sutures, that is something that is absorbable and so those do not need to be taken out. This is not absorbable and it is typically used on the surface of the skin. First things first, I gotta get my, my surgical site ready. Orange, simple orange. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a couple incisions in the orange and then we're gonna go uh, and sew this thing back up together. So when we're cutting through, you have to learn how hard to press on the tissue. So that only comes with practice. When you first learn to cut, most people tend not to press hard enough. 
and they tend to just kind of go on the edge and then you got to make a whole bunch of passes and you don't want to do that. You, you don't want to make um, an incision where you have a whole bunch of marks. You want to make one straight line in the tissue Let me just do one more here. And what I'll do is I'll intersect these lines a little bit. So now we've made some incisions. Always practice safety, so we're gonna protect our blade. Although generally when we are in the um, OR, we don't use these type of disposable blades. We use reusable handles that can be sterilized and we put single use blades onto those handles. Most of the places actually now use what are called safety blades. So they have a retractable cover, which you can place back over the blade. Put my hand out, I'll ask for the scalpel. They'll put the scalpel in my hand, blade first. What? So then I'll start working. When I'm handing the scalpel back, because I need to pay attention to what I'm doing, I will hand the scalpel back, I'll sit knife up, hand the scalpel back. Usually if it has a, a retractable cover on it, I'll put the cover on so that it's safe and then I will hand it back while I'm concentrating on what I'm concentrating on. So they know that when they get it back, it's safe, they're not gonna cut themselves. So we've got the knife there. So now, there's a number of ways where you can dissect this, but basically I'm gonna use my snap here just as a tool to do some blunt dissection just to get the edge started. And then we use our dissection scissors, the METs. And I'm going to try to dissect the peel off the orange without damaging the tissue underneath too much. So this is kind of like the, the layers of the skin in a human. So you have the outer rind of the peel, which is kind of like the epidermis or your outer layer of skin. And then you have this layer of white underneath, which is like the dermis of the skin. And underneath that, you have the fascia and the muscle tissue. Do it once more over on this side. We use the tips of the dissection scissors to do what we call blunt dissection. We find a plane, the desired area that we want. We kind of gently spread the blades and then we can dissect the tissue. So again, you can see here, we have the epidermis or the outer layer of the skin, the dermis underneath, and then we have the fascia, which is this white stuff would be co covering the muscle tissue. We were gonna go much deeper than that if we we're um, operating on an internal structure, then obviously we would carry out our dis dissection down through the layer of the muscle tissue, elevating that as appropriate, cauterizing or ligating or tying off any blood vessels that we come across so that we uh, minimize bleeding. Sometimes to also help with minimizing bleeding, we would put on what's called a tourniquet. And so for those of you who don't know what that is, just think of a big blood pressure cuff. So we would use that to help um, control the blood flow in the area where we're working. But obviously we can only use uh, tourniquets on the extremities. So arms, hands, legs, uh, and feet. If you're working on the core, you cannot do that. Um, and then you have to have more stringent or more strict hemostasis. So hemostasis just refers to the control of bleeding. And so we would either do that by tying off the blood vessel or we would cauterize the blood vessel, apply an electric current to the blood vessel um, where it was open or cut. We would burn the tip and that would basically heat up the tip and cause the protein in the tip to coagulate and basically you block off the flow of the blood. Having said all of that, we now have our two incisions, as you can see in the orange, and obviously we want to close this guy up because we don't want to have any infections. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out our suture. We need our forceps and we need our needle driver. We're gonna take out the needle. This is a medium-sized needle. There's two different types of needles, uh, roughly two different types of needles. One's called a taper and the other one's called a cutting needle. We use those different needles at, at different times. Now we're going to sew these incisions back up and there's a number of ways to do this. We always wanna to try to reapproximate the skin to where it was before it was open. So one of the things that we do before we actually cut the skin is we will 
mark on our incision. So for example, if I were making an incision like this, I would mark the incision. Then I would also mark the ends of the incision and I would probably mark some hatch marks across the incision or some lines across the incision. That tells me when I cut this, I know that these two spots go together. I know that these two spots go together. I know that this here goes together and that goes together. So that when we finish our incision, we try to recreate that. We've already made our incisions just for the purposes of teaching put these lines across. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew this point together because I know that that point goes there. I said to you that our needles are curved and the reason why is because we need to be able to take the needles in and out of the flesh and the easiest way to do that is if the needles are curved. When we bring the needles in we don't just push the needle we actually rotate our wrist because the needle is curved so we rotate the wrist around. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do this first suture here because this is going to secure the corner and I know that this, the corner is secure there. Tie my knots so there are a number of ways to tie knots. This is called a stick tie, whereas you can tie by hand. That corner is solid there. So I've done that suture. Grab my suture. Because this is uh, an orange and this is not someone's flesh, it's gonna be rolling around. So normally I would try not to touch my needle. Although we were gonna have sterile gloves on, do everything with our instruments. That means I tie with my instruments, I grab my suture with my instruments, I manipulate the suture with the instrument. Because we have the orange and it rolls, it makes it a little bit more difficult for me to do that. So I have my needle here. I'm gonna hold the needle in such a way, the needle is dangling here over my um, surgical field, and then I'm going to tie the knot. So obviously we tie the knots with our instruments. For the stick tie, we do two throws first, and then we grab the suture. We always want to make sure that our knots are square. So if you look at the knot right now, you can see it kind of looks all jumbled up. But if I rotate my hands, you can see that now the knot has come flat. So this is what we mean when we say we're going to tie the knot square. So that when I do that, the suture lays down nice and flat, and it's easy for me to grasp. So then I'm going to do another loop a single throw, come back the other way, again the knot is flat, and then I want to make sure that both of those first two passes of the suture have been in the same direction. Now I'm going to do one suture throw in the opposite direction so that I can lock the suture. Because when I did those first two throws, the knot could still slide, but if I lock the suture, then the knot will no longer slide. When we tie our knots, we always want to try and leave long enough tails that whoever's going to be taking out these sutures is going to be able to grasp the suture. If you ever have had sutures put in and the sutures are difficult to take out, one of the reasons why that it might be difficult to take out is because whomever was cutting the sutures Usually when the surgeon is sewing, it's not him who's cutting. It may be the surgical assistant or the scrub tech or the scrub nurse. They have cut the sutures too short. Uh, I'm not sure which one to cut here. So we always got to remind them to cut the sutures at an appropriate length. But this is of course for sutures that are going on the outside of the body. These are sutures that we're going to cut out. If they were sutures on the inside of the body, I'll often say to people, cut it short, which means cut it just above the knots, no tails. So. Pass another throw here. So again, it's rotating. You try to make sure that we can control, control our instruments. So you try to move everything as little as possible and keep it close to the surface that you're working on. So again, you can see everything's twisted up there, but now the knot lays flat. Two square and then one the opposite direction. So people who are watching, oh, let's see. Yeah, so that one's a little bit loose there. So people who are watching might be saying, well, how do I know that I've done them in opposite direction? Well, let me show you. Okay, so let's again get our suture, pass through, grab the suture. Oh, oh, 
Almost lost it. Nope. Saved it. Tail, other end. I'm gonna put the needle driver in between. Roll around twice, okay? Turn my hands to make sure the knot is square. Good. Lay it down. Now the tail is on the other side. But if I wanna make sure that I've, I'm tying this next suture in the same direction, I keep the needle driver in between the tail and the end. So boom, other direction. Make sure it's square, pull. Now I want to do this last one in an opposite direction. So rather than putting the needle driver inside between the two ends, I'm gonna put it outside one end, do my loop, come back, grab the suture, and bang. I know I have a locked knot with two throws in one direction and a single throw in the other direction. So I won't talk too much. I'll just sew these up. I'm running out of suture here. So pretty soon I'm gonna to have to ask my scrub nurse for a new suture to do my other incision. People always wonder how much suture do we need to suture with? And as you can see, we don't really have that much left. And it's always kind of a contest with us to see just how little suture we can suture with. How, how little suture do we need to tie knots. There you go. Oh, but just because I want to challenge myself and how much do I got left here? Okay, I got five centimeters left. And because there's just a little bit of a opening here, we're gonna see if I can do one more knot with this suture. It's short. It is short. Boom, shock a lock. So there you go. So that's one that is sewn. Okay, always protect your needle. Make sure the needle is safe. We don't want anybody to get poked. So now I'm gonna show you a little magic. So I showed you guys how to suture. So now I'm gonna show you hand ties and I'm gonna show you hand ties when you have something, you have the needle driver in one hand and you only have one hand to tie knots with. So now I have a finer needle. Okay, or a finer suture. This is a 5-0, which is a much smaller, much finer needle. So I'm just gonna do a couple of passes with this suture, and I just wanna do that so that you can see what happens when we have to sew up and we're not doing stick ties. So I'm gonna pass a throw of the suture here. It's a much smaller needle, so we have to take a much shallower bite. Okay, so I'm gonna grab that. I'm going to, because I'm gonna be tying with my hands, I wanna protect the needle here. So I wanna make sure that the needle is safe. So I put the point back here, grab the rest of the needle. So that's locked, so I know that this is safe. So now I'm holding the suture here, I've got the one end of the suture, and I'm going to tie knots with my one hand, okay? So. So when we're tying the knots, we want to do knots in both directions. Oh, and you can see because it's a very fine suture, it actually pulled out of the tissue. So let's cut the knot off and let's try that again. Let's see if we can take a bit of a deeper bite here. Does that ever happen? What, knots get pulled out? No, like you pull through the skin. Oh yeah, especially uh, patients who have what we call very friable skin, so elderly patients, 
patients who have very, very poor protein intake, don't have a lot of albumin, those people, very, it's, uh, un, it's very common for, for sutures to pull out. Boom, again, we try to make sure that our knots are square. Now, usually, if we were going to use suture this fine, we wouldn't be tying that by hand. We would usually be doing instrument ties, but just for the purpose of this, I'm gonna show you guys. So there's four throws. Let's do one more for good measure. How many do you normally do? Um, usually for what I'm doing, I'm gonna do three throws. If you're doing ties on blood vessels or what not, things that like you don't want in any way, shape or form the knot to come off, you might do more. Again, protect our needle. The tip. Oh, it's pointing into the scissors. Yes. Okay. We do our throws. It's not enough. Nine. It's like enough. I, enough. I want it to be really secure. It's enough. Just for good measure, 10. You can see it's making like a pile of knots. We call that a knot stack. It actually? Yeah. It's actually. It's called a knot stack because it's a stack of knots, obviously. Okay. Wow. You would never do 10. Oh. Your knot stack would have four. Oh. Three or four or okay. five. There, there is my orange. I've operated on orange today. Fortunately, this orange will go on to make orange juice on another day. Okay. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you can get notified when we post new content. If you're a returning member of the intern army, <laughs> you know what to do. Go hit the like button and share this video with a friend. If you'd like to see me operate on things other than orange, like say for example, I don't know, pig's foot, grape, something like that, be sure to let me know what you'd like to see in the comments and I'll try to accommodate you. And as always, that's been a word, or maybe that's been a suture from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho.